Hello, this is an RMCT4 map preview for the first round and we are looking at Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare is one of the two maps uh, which could be selected by teams for the um, round one, qualifying round A of uh, RMCT4. It's a fairly straightforward two lane race for wool map with a shared lane area at the end. Uh, teams drop down at the beginning and they can get basic PvP supplies there. There is a small amount of iron in that chest in this kind of area <laughs> here and then they come to this small um, sandstone house which contains just a few blocks and a bed. Now up there is a watchtower that's a good kind of PvP sniping outpost some teams use. There's also something to watch for a zombie spawner um, underneath the sand there so it's important for teams to light up the map really well and maybe take that spawner out too. The first wool is kind of a lava jumps parkour style thing very very simple wool, not much to it, but if it's under PvP pressure from the other team it can be pretty solidly locked down. So it's one that some teams will choose to rush really really early in the game. Other teams may leave it for later but they do run the risk of the, uh, their opponents getting really well set up and locking them down here. Uh, it's simply a matter of getting past those spawners there, there's only three um, there's dispensers which fire arrows and then down here a couple more spawners and drop down, jump across the bedrock blocks or place water to obsidianize the lava and the green wool is in here. So that's first wool. Another thing to note about first wool that may be appropriate during the um, matches that we're going to be seeing is that underneath the lava are furnaces. The main reason for that is so that when you're trying to pillar back out of the lava if you fall in you will have a little bit more difficulty placing blocks. You have to remember to hold shift. but as a little easter egg there are three diamond tools in three of the furnaces on here and r well practiced teams may learn where those tools are there's a diamond pick a diamond shovel and a diamond sword and use that to their advantage because supplies are not that great on this map so those three tools can turn out to be pretty handy so moving on down the lane and we will take a look at the Victory Monument first of all. Victory Monument is a very exposed position on this map. You place the three walls where these three glass blocks are on the top. But it's only on a surface of sand and sandstone. Very, very easy to cannon and we have seen many times uh, teams taking out this area of sand here, the sand kind of underneath the Victory Monument and also this kind of bridge here, whatever the opponent team puts up as a bridge there often gets cannon too. So it is really really important that teams focus on getting themselves a safe route to the Victory Monument because we've often seen cannons being used to great effect here. Even if the other team has all the wool, if they can't get it to their monument then they can't win the game. So that is quite a point of contention on this map. Down here below the watchtower there's like a resources area. This is something that we don't really see being used very often. There is a minecart trap, um, some items in this chest minecart here, a little bit of food and some leather and some bows. There are more resources further down and also this area offers a number of iron blocks which teams may choose to go for, although more often than not that's something that teams tend to skip these days. Um, there's also some more food and bows and arrows and resources down there in that chest. Um, if one team does come down here, they're quite likely to hit the button to set off the minecart trap, which will destroy the um, equivalent resources over on the other side. As I mentioned, down in the ravine, there are the iron blocks. There's also a silverfish spawner and a skeleton spawner. Uh, and the great difficulty with getting that iron really is the time it takes to pillar your way back out or tunnel your way back out after you've been and gone and collected it. So that tends to be something that a lot of teams don't really bother with. Now moving on to this area here. This is called the graveyard and in this area there are a number of graves um, all of which contain various different items. The graves are named after well-known YouTubers. Uh, most of it is junk but there is the occasional decent item like a couple of golden apples there. There's a diamond sword and some chain mail. One of the other graves has some iron armor uh, and a diamond axe and there is food here. Food is kind of limited on this map. There's not a huge amount of it so um, the melons in the graveyard can be a useful resource for teams to pick up on their way through. Another thing to note about the graveyard is there are three zombie pigmen spawners in this area and it is really important that teams take those out. If the game turns into an extended match the other team can anger your zombie, zombie pigmen and make this a real nightmare to get through. So we often see teams uh, targeting those three spawners early in the game and removing them to make it safe. 
I'll take a look now at second wool, which is down below the graveyard. The entrance to second wool is through this little stone structure here. You come down into the wool, and this is really quite a nasty PvE wool and exposed to PvP as well. We've got spider spawners, skeleton spawners, cave spider spawners as you go further on, and it can get really difficult. And of course, the cell sand makes moving through here very, very slow. But really, the cave spiders are the major issue in this wool. I think the cave spider spawners are kind of towards the end. There we go. And once they've negotiated all that, they can pick up the blue wool. And just to mention, below the end of that wool, there are also some additional resources that, again, are not something we often see teams going for. Um, some potions down here and some potion brewing equipment. And along at the other end, there's a chest with enchanting gear. No, I apologize, there is no enchanting gear. Uh, just some diamond swords and stuff. And, um, again, TNT traps with which to destroy the equivalent resources on the other side. But that's not something we've seen all that often used on this map. But you never know. Moving on to this third and final area of the map then. Uh, these obsidian spheres are um, have chests containing various resources. The higher up the spheres have better gear. For example, this one here has a diamond sword come over to this one two sets of iron armor um, the lower spheres aren't quite so good quite often teams will choose to bridge over the top of these but they are very exposed and in danger of being shot off while they do so but it's worth it in many cases to get the good items up there the lower spheres don't have such good gear but it's probably a safer route to get across although the lava is a little bit hazardous there are some ores down underneath here. In particular, there's a few diamond ores available down here, and occasionally we've seen uh, teams make use of those um, to get themselves a diamond pick, which can be very helpful in third wool. Although there is a diamond pick available in one of the furnaces underneath first, as I mentioned earlier. So that's the Obsidian Spheres area, and uh, finally to look at third wool, this is a shared lane area, and this is where melee PvP becomes uh, a major issue. This is kind of um, the Enderman Mountain, Tears of Ender, I think it's called. Inside here are loads of spawners. The whole thing's made out of obsidian with a final dungeon made of bedrock. Uh, you have to negotiate your way through. Creeper spawners. More spawners down there. Chest here containing a few flint and steels and some arrows. And then we come to this area down here. Now this area has got Enderman spawners, which um, could be an asset or could be a major disadvantage, and the two entrances to the wool rooms. And it's important that teams choose to go into their own wool room at this point, because if they accidentally go into the opposing team's lane, um, they will be destroyed by the plug-in. Beyond this point, they have only their own wool to get, and they just kind of make their way through. A few more spawners to deal with there. Squeeze through the lava and there is the red wool. Now this area in most of the games I've seen recently has been a very very important location on the map. It tends to be the case that the, f the first team to get here is able to control the mountain and lock it down so the other team can't get on for a really really long time. What we've often seen teams do is get themselves an iron bucket and then pick up some lava here and just pour it all over the opposing team's side of the mountain. So that is something that we will see, I expect, is teams rushing really, really quickly to get to this part of the map. But there are alternatives to going up and over. If you know exactly where to tunnel, for example, around here, you can actually get into your wool room or into the, the bedrock area at the end of the wool um, simply by digging through a few blocks of obsidian. So as I mentioned, some teams do go for getting a diamond pick in order to be able to tunnel their way in. There are a few other locations where you can tunnel through as well. So there we go. That's Modern Wool Fair. There will be eight maps on this, eight matches on this map during round one of our MCT, and uh, the first one of which is taking place today. So join the streams and enjoy. Thanks for watching.